Last week, the Chinese government announced it was considering new export restrictions on rare earth elements, essential to the production of a wide variety of high-tech goods like smartphones, electric vehicles, and military equipment. China is the world's largest producer of rare earth elements, accounting for around 70% of total global production. The proposed ban, which is widely viewed as a response to the U.S.'s imposition of export restrictions on microchips and semiconductor technologies imposed on China by the CHIPS Act earlier this year, could have a devastating impact on global markets and manufacturing. But what exactly is going on with the proposed ban, and how can international relations help us understand it? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. Welcome to IR Explainer, where I explore the theories and concepts behind international relations and global events. Last week was not the first time China used its dominance in the production of the world's rare earth elements in an attempt to secure foreign policy objectives. In 2010, China limited Japan's access to rare earth elements amid, dip amid diplomatic tensions between the two countries over the arrest of a Chinese trawler captain near a disputed island in the East China Sea. The ban la that ban lasted two months, but it generated significant concerns about the global supply of rare earth elements, leading Japan, the United States, and other countries to seek out alternative suppliers. As a result, China's control of the global rare earth element production declined from around 90% of the world's supply in 2010 to around 70% today, primarily as a result of expanding production across Africa. But what exactly are rare earth elements? Rare earth elements are a group of 17 metals that are essential to the production of various high-tech products such as smartphones, wind turbines, electric cars, and military equipment. Despite the name, rare earth elements are actually quite abundant in the earth's crust. Their rareness comes not from the total global supply, but from the difficulty in extracting ore deposits, both in terms of the economic cost and the environmental impact. China's current proposal focuses on limiting the export of rare earth magnets essential to the production of electric vehicles, military aircraft, robots, mobile phones, and air conditioners. China is estimated to control around 85% of global rare earth magnets, meaning there would be few alternative suppliers in global markets should China go forward with the ban. China's proposed ban can be seen as an example of resource nationalism, which refers to the practice of governments asserting greater control over natural resources within their borders, often to the detriment of foreign firms or companies. In the case of rare earth elements, China's dominant position in the market gives it significant leverage over other countries, particularly those that rely on rare earth imports. By restricting exports, China can exert pressure on other countries to comply with its political or economic demands. In a sense, China's move is similar to the oil embargoes imposed by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, on the United States and Western Europe in the 1970s. Then, OPEC used its dominance in global oil markets to restrict American and European access to oil, leading to shortages and sharp price spikes in response to Western support for Israel during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War. The move led to a rationing of gas in the United States, but also spurred the expansion of domestic oil production, a shift to more efficient engines, and the growth of alternative energy supplies. The proposed ban by China would likely be even more devastating, particularly because China controls a greater proportion of the global rare earth elements than OPEC controlled in global oil markets in the 1970s. This also highlights the concept of economic interdependence, which refers to the mutual dependence of states on one another for economic prosperity and survival. In the case of rare earth elements, many countries rely on imports from China, making them vulnerable to disruptions in supply. This vulnerability highlights the importance of economic interdependence and the need to diversify supply chains to mitigate risk or of over-reliance on a single supplier. I explored the way in which economic interdependence might be weaponized in another video, which I'll link to in the description below. China's threat to restrict rare earth elements highlights the complex dynamics of international relations and the use of economic leverage as a, of as a tool of statecraft. 
resource nationalism and economic interdependence can help us better understand the implications of the issue for the international system. And it also imp it underscores the importance of diversified supply chains. But that's it for now. If you found this helpful, click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to catch future explainers as I release them. Please leave any questions you have about this video or any suggestions for future explainer topics in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.